Thank you for staying with us. Now, yesterday it was reported that there were protests in some parts of Lagos State. The Okada and Kaka riders took to the street protesting and tires being burnt around. Let's take a look at this. I know I've been a little bit quiet uh, as of recent events um, with the motorcycle transport ban in Lagos, but I've been trying to process it and, and figure out how I exactly want to uh, speak on the topic. I mean, uh, it's tough for an entrepreneur who's trying to innovate, who's investing his own money when this is not my country. It's, it's a country that I, I feel has amazing potential and has amazing people. And they just need the opportunity to shine. And the drivers that were at Gokata, every one of them wasn't there because they just wanted to make money. They were there because they had families. They had children, they had dreams. They wanted to start businesses. They wanted to go to school. They had degrees already but they couldn't find jobs. For many, Gokata wasn't the final place for their lives. It was a stepping stone to get to that next endeavor. And we were hoping that a lot of these drivers wouldn't be drivers forever. We were hoping that we could place them in higher jobs within Gokata and create a, a, a beautiful community which was developing slowly and 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 it, it, it was it was really something that moved me to the point where i was okay putting all my money and all my effort in what i'll tell you is that gokata is not just a business to me it's a mission and every part of that mission was always being safe providing jobs we had we do things that nobody else did in the market at the time. We provided helmets that were DOT certified, Department of Transportation certified. And there you have the CEO of Golkada expressing his views about the ban recently on Golkada, Keke, and Okada. Joining us during the break is Ugochuku Ikeako, political analyst. Thank you, Ugochuku, for being here with us this evening. Thanks, and still with me this evening also is John Wesley, who didn't go anywhere, by the way. <laughs> now, would you, would you consider that, if that video by and the CEO Gokada is whipping up sentiment? No, no. John Wesley? Uh, well, uh, having seen this, uh, I would not uh, regard this as Because sentiment. he made some very silent points yeah. as to what Gokada's mission is. Yeah, well, well basically, like, um, like we were talking before we went on break, uh, we're talking about the review, yes. you know, with the governor meeting with uh, groups like these and all of that you know, to see what they can do. But I am still of the opinion that we're in a society where there are no uh, provision for such, uh, for that particular transportation sector until we have provision. One of the major reasons why this ban took place is as a result of the, 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 the number of lives that have now, been... Now, sorry, sorry to cut you in. If you say there's no provision, I want to believe in, in the extant law of Lagos State transportation-wise, and it, it was clearly spelled out that any, 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 any engine between um, you know, 200 cc, it, it can ply the highways. And so if this occurred, I mean, meet up that requirement, why is this ban coming into effect? Well, I am of the opinion, again, like I said, that... You see, I mentioned certain countries. Yes. The, the, the way and manner these riders go on this highway. We talked about there are no training points, there are nothing. You know, somebody just comes from somewhere, uh, gets on the bike. One brother from somewhere is trying to help the rider, you know. And we have had situations whereby you see a lot of these guys throw people into the lagoon, throw people everywhere under the trailer and all of that. Mm. 
It is not about whether the engine can run on the highway. It's about who writes it. It's about the number of lives that mm -hmm. go, you know, you know, we, we, we lose every day as to accidents then the caused by then, this and then, all of then that. Then the matter of regulation should now come to play. That's what I'm saying. Not outright ban then. And that if these are the concerns. And basically there are no, if you are stuck, like, like we're talking before, you know, before we return. Yes. It is not an outright ban. If it were to be an outright ban, like I mentioned, in my own area, the Okada riders are still operating very effectively. Right. But the places where they have been banned is clear. They are, they mention, there, there's this what they call a trunk A axis and what have you. You know, so they, they, these things have been mentioned. It's okay. not like there's an outright right, ban. I'll, I'll come to you, Wesley. Let's, let's take Ugochuku's thought on this. Do you think this move by the Lagos State government was wrong? It's very foolish. This is the most foolish thing that has happened. Why would you say that? The number one is that for a government that does not know how to create jobs, a government that cannot say that this is how many jobs we've created since, since last year, uh, you are telling investors that Lagos is not the place to put in your money. We're talking about Gokada, Mars Go and rest of them. I've met governors, they've, they've met with the governor a couple of times in the past. You took pictures with them in their offices. Gokada, for example, yeah, gave bikes, like you mentioned, 200 CC to the state security services. Up to 200 bikes, all right? What he's saying is unsubstantiated. You're not saying cars have accidents in Lagos every day. Trucks have killed more people in Lagos than any other thing. Trucks keep falling down in Lagos every day. Have anybody banned them? Are they not still on that Sulary Road up to this point? So it does not make sense. You can't just wake up and say things that, are, that nobody can substantiate. And they're telling you that they've had, during their protest last week, they said they've had thousands of rides, who've recorded the so, so number of accidents. Who does that? So it does not make sense. Is it for anybody to come here and say things that you cannot substantiate? Because these people are telling you that, because at the end of the day, these, these guys raise money. Investors gave them money to invest in Nigeria. You have thousands and thousands of people that, 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 that are employed through this. It's, it's not just Gokada. You had managers in that place. You had, you, you had, you had, you had, you had HR, you had the rest of them. Now, Gokada has sacked eight, close to 80% 80, 80, 80 of their workforce. And what happens is that all these people, they fall back into what the unemployment figure in Nigeria. So it doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. You can easily say, okay, apart from that, like, which accident? How many people? Compared to what, what uh, 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 downfalls, the trucks and the rest of them, do every day in Lagos. So that, that, that aside, yeah, then... Yeah, but people argue that those means of transportation, they're within the framework of Lagos transport system. So now, I think what, what we should try to clarify, the Okada, the KK, are they within the framework of Lagos transportation system? We, we, see, we're talking about a governor that is very insincere. F October 1st, Sawalu climbed the platform stage I did, at, I did say at, that, at, at, at Onikon, mm. just here, not far, Onikon, and said that he's working with these guys to regulate this thing. How can you in three months' time, with not up to three months, you reverse yourself? What signal are you sending to the international community? What signal are you sending to investors? You said this thing, nobody asked you, you said this is it. And the truth is that for everybody that is on this, on this regulated platform, let's talk about the Gokada, the Mask, I'm, talk, I'm talking about the Okadas, I'm talking about somebody that comes from somewhere and just started driving Okada. All of them are trained. They have, they, have, they, they, they have access to, uh, to health insurance, they have access, they have their dead, their daughters and the rest of them. They don't just wake up and give someone a bike to ride because you feel like you can ride back. So already there has been effort by the private sector to regulate these people and they have their data. And you, the governor himself okayed it and said, okay, I'll work with these people to continue to do this thing. So how do you now wake up in the morning and embark on a ban that has made it difficult for people to go to their work, go to offices, people are losing money. Some people have lost their job because they can't go there on time. All right, I went to work this morning and I'm coming back here. I, from, from CMS to this place, there was traffic and it wasn't caused by bike. It wasn't caused by mass It wasn't caused by anybody. The roads are blocked. The reason people use this thing is to make movement easy from point A to point B. So you can't just ban, by, ban bike and put in 500 buses on a road that is blocked. Didn't they go to school? So it doesn't make sense. Now, okay, during one of his speeches, I think it's that same speech he was referring and saying that part of the major reasons for the congestion on Lagos Road is because of these Okada riders and Keke uh, Maras is properly called here. Yeah. Now let's, let's talk about the, the issue of traffic congestion in Lagos. Do you think they actually were the problem for Lagos um, traffic congestion and now they are off our roads? How better is, is the traffic situation in Lagos? The roads are the... Because now I'm thinking we even have more cars now on the road. Like people, I heard a lot of people who would normally not move their cars, they would take this um, alternative means of transportation. They all have their, their cars back on the road now. Let's address the issue of traffic congestion in Lagos. Traffic congestion in Lagos, we all know, is due to bad roads. If you have the roads fixed, there will be no traffic congestion. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. 
if you try it, go to certain areas where are usually congested, you know. They are as a result of bad roads. Anyone who ply Ikorodu Road very well, you are familiar with K2, you are familiar with My 12 and certain areas. You would know that sincerely when you drive to those points, nothing causes traffic than bad roads because every vehicle that gets to such point must slow down. And so long as we have bad roads, there will be traffic congestion. However, on a daily basis, the number of people who trooping into Lagos, you just can't imagine the number of people who come into this place on a daily basis. Now, um, while Ugo Chuku was talking, he talked about, you know, Go Kada more. But if you look at the number of Go Kada riders we have, compared with those that are not even Go Kada riders, what's the percentage? And then we have a good, you talked about these people being trained and all of that. What about those who do not work with Go Kada, who do not work with Max NG and all of that? What about all these guys who just get on the road? I know of so many people who just come from nooks and cranny of Nigeria, they come to Lagos, and the first business they want to do is ride Okada. And then they get on the bike. They are not trained. I am saying these things, you see, as a, you see, we understand that if anything must work, if anything must work, there must be sacrifice. It's just unfortunate that, you know, people will get emotional about everything. That's the truth. That's the way we are. That's the way we are configured. We get emotional about it because we feel that it should not be done. It should not be done. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Okay. Many people have argued the fact that the Lagos State government right now is cherry picking on the ban on Okada, that which is not a solution to to the transition um, problem in Lagos State. What do you think the government of Lagos State needs to address? Uh, first of all, let me let me let, let me start with him. I'm not driven by emotion. All right. I'm a, I'm a fact based person. I'm an analyst. I, everything I say here, you can ask Google. You can measure it. If, if it's false, let me know. All right? And I'm telling you that it, it, it's easy for you to model facts up. If you're talking about people that are coming from the north or from any part of the country to drive normal Okada, the ones that we know, they are not regulated. They are not trained. That, those, that, that is the different conversation from the people that work within mass go, go Kada and the rest of them. These guys are different. But there, so, but so, there are no specifications. See, there are, the, the, gov, the government did not specify see, you, that see, we are no, placing see, a ban but, on a group of whatever. Yeah. It's a ban on Okada riders. And they I'm, did not I'm, even say we are placing a ban on Gokada. They did not say we are placing a ban on Max NG. It's a, it's a ban on Okada riders and Keke riders. Okay. That's what he said. So everybody is, you know, following suit whether you, so long as you are riding this what? This and and, and, and the, the thing you, you forgot to understand, that the government said that if you have a bike that is up to 200cc, <laughs> these bikes have bikes, their bikes are up to 200cc. So already you are conflating your argument. It's very clear. If the government wants to ban Okada that is not regulated, then ban them. Nobody has an issue with them. If, if you're not licensed, you don't understand how to, Nobody has an issue with them. But if your governor wakes up on the, on the morning and go to a platform and says to the whole world that this is what I'm doing with these guys, I'm working with Gokan and the rest of them to do this thing, they're regulated. Then three months after, and you do, you do, you do, you do something that is practically opposite. What are, you, what, what are you saying? It doesn't make sense. No. And for me, what would the governor do? First of all, the governor needs to understand that you can't leave the state by not have not being intelligent. You can't just you can't just make policies. You can't just make policies that policies some, some assault. Because at the end of the day, I'm saying this thing not it's not, it's not out of it's not it's not out of emotion or anything. But I live in Lagos. You, 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 you can't ask me you can't ask me a question. You're not Benny. All right, I'm not here for you to ask me a question. See, you can't just make policies because you can't just make policies because you feel you can make them. All right? Well, I'm talking about on the investment part of it. Go cut out least millions of dollars and rest of them. See, the, the, the investment climate, what are you telling the, uh, somebody that wants to invest? What are you telling them that the government can wake up tomorrow and cancel a policy that an investor feels that this is the reason I'm supposed to invest? No, but what, what if it's not within, Lagos has a master plan where I'm not privy to that master plan. So what, again, let's... let's there's no master plan in yeah. Lagos. If, if within the no, transportation, no, no. if within the transportation, no master go, plan in if Lagos. within the transportation framework yeah. of this master yeah. plan, the Okada riders, the, the, the Kekers, the Okadas, are not allowed. What, what? And this is um, Jideza Olu right now taking the initi initiative to make sure that the master plan begins to work. Should we go against this? It, should we not begin to hold the government this, accountable this, for what they should do? Like better rail, r metro lines. We're going to talk about Let's talk about metro lines. Benny, Benny, yeah. Benny, the metro lines started in 2008. Yeah. This is what, 20 what? 2020. This is more than a decade. Not, not, it has not been completed yet. The, uh, the Lekki Expressway, they've not finished the construction of that road. 
It's, it's supposed to be having completed up to this point. And I'm telling you, these things are fact-based, all right? Within the time that we started our, 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 our railway, all right, the, the, the Lagos railway, Ethiopia has finished their own. South Africa has finished their own. All right, even um, Kenya and rest of them. What have we done? You can't say you have a master plan. They wake up in the morning and go and evict people from Takwa Bay. You can't say you have a master plan. They wake, wake no, up and okay. go and evict people from Toto Bame. Yes. That is not how it can't be on an inclusive society. It can't be the mega city by trying to push the poor away or make it difficult for people to live and okay. make money. I'm going to ask both of you one more question before I take your thoughts to wrap up this segment. Now, I'm concerned about this. I hope this is not going to be another New Year resolution because. Like you rightly said, um, some, they've made it clear that some of the dispatch riders are exempted from this ban. Doesn't that in a way throw a, a span in the works for this ban? Because up to last night, I still saw a few cutters riding in my area in Lekki. I'm like, okay, what is going on here? Doesn't that throw a span in the works? Because if it's an outright ban or restriction on a cutter, why are the dispatch riders separate? Why are they, why are they, why are they separated? The go cutters are also registered. They provide vital services for people to move around. So doesn't that in any way throw a walk in the spanner for this man? And it could just, we would just wake up and realize it's just another new res resolution that will not see the light of day. And see, that's why I say something about, about the, the policy summer so all right? When this thing happened on Saturday, we saw, we saw videos online where, where uh, security officials were hounding some of the delivery guys, you know, in some places across Lagos. And for example, the delivery guys, they use the same bike as the guys for go and the rest of them. And I'm not, I'm not here to do PR for anybody. I'm not here to speak on anybody's behalf. But if you allow the same guys to use the same bike that has 200 CCC, then that is what the same these guys are using. And you are still allowed them to do delivery. See, it doesn't make sense that you are hounding a, a set of people because of this whole thing, all right? And this is the same set of, set of people that the NU, NULTW is trying to drag some, 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 mm. some percentage of money from yeah. their pocket. So at the end of the day, it does not, if, for, for, if Lagos can't say that we want to be a mega city or want to grow, if we, can, if we, make, we keep doing things like this, it doesn't send the right signal to anybody that wants to invest. Because at the okay. end of the day, John, what is John, going away? All right. John, John Wesley, this is it. Um, do you think people are whipping up sentiment when they say this outright ban will increase um, insecurity, um, crime rates, and joblessness as it is? Even before the ban, <laughs> have they not been committing crimes? You know, it's not, you see, it, most of these things that we talk about, the, the Okada riders, you know, it's just unfortunate that we, we have to begin to talk about Gokada and what have you. You know, the, it, it's just, um, uh, they, they put everything together, Okada riders. No specification of whether you are a go Kada, you are Max NG and all of you. We have these riders perpetrate a whole lot of evil. So even that, that if- That goes without saying. You yes. understand? So even if after the ban, we now have you know, this uh, crime, you know, we hear of it, we hear of it. It's not like it's not been happening. It's been happening. So my own take, like, 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 like he said, the deregulation, the regulation. I want to believe that the regulation of a thing, they will get to a point that it will be resolved. I'm very sure of that. But you see, one of the things that I will emphasize and I will make very clear when it comes to either Gokada or whoever, it is that something has come to play underneath, and that's politics. All you right, cannot take that much, away. John Wesley and Ugochuku Ekaka for your contributions. And thank you for staying with us. The plan for the government concerning Nigerians who are stranded in China is up for discussion. Stay with us. The coronavirus is still spreading across countries, but thankfully, no case has been announced in Nigeria. However, lawmakers in the House of Representatives have rejected a motion to evacuate Nigerians allegedly stranded in China following the outbreak of the disease. Now, the lawmakers who voted against the bill stated that China has better facilities to handle the situation than Nigeria does. Is this a wise decision? And joining me still on this discussion this evening is Ugo Chiku Ekiako, political analyst, and also John Wesley. Thank you guys for staying with me. Thank Thank you. You now, let's talk about this. First of all, what is your take on this development? Ugo Chiku, I'll start with you. Well, I think for me, um, the, the coronavirus is, is a scary stuff, you know, be falling in the news from, from China, you know, across the world. So it's something that is scary. It, it has that, it has that, you know, it gives you that, you know, you had like the fear that of the fear of Ebola and rest of them. So when, whenever issues like this come up, it's, it's very scary and you don't know what to do. And the, the truth is that the Chinese government, Beijing has tried very well on their own part to, you know, manage this thing in a way that, in a way that it doesn't spread, you know, very fast. And uh, luckily yesterday, I'm reading that there are some people have recovered from, from this virus. Some people, some people, some people have died, uh, unfortunately. But uh, I think, I think uh, the House of Representatives, uh, for the first time in a long, 
time, uh, he's saying something that I think I want to agree with them. It does not make sense for us to go and uh, lift people from Wuhan and bring them back into Nigeria. Where would, I don't think at this moment, the government hasn't shown us anything to see, see that, okay, we're capable of handling something like this if it, in case it happens. So uh, being, in, in, being in Wuhan, I think they have a better chance of, you know, uh, life, a better chance of if anything pops up, the Chinese government can handle this thing. Because already uh, they've started, they started attending to people that have, uh, that have this, uh, this virus and some people have recovered from it. So uh, it's, it's for us, I think what, what we need to do is for the, the Nigeria government here to uh, interface with our representative in, in Beijing, wherever it is, to make sure that the Nigerians there are safe. All right? if Nigerians no, but there, it's been confirmed that the Nigerians living in Wuhan, so they, far none of them has the case, no reported case of the coronavirus. And, 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 and that is a good thing. So yeah. It's just, it just to continue that conversation to make sure that the Chinese government prioritize our own people here. So if there's anything, if there's any eventuality that happens, <laughs> maybe in the next coming days, they, they will know that, okay, this person is going to receive help, this person is going to receive proper treatment. And so for me, uh, lifting them and bringing them back to Nigeria, I don't think, I don't think Nigeria, who, who, the last time we had issue with South Africa, remember, it was, it was the LP's guy, Onyema, that helped us to lift Nigeria yes. back, to, back to South Africa. Mm -hmm. If we can't go to South Africa and lift our own people, is it China? So I, I right. have issue w with Wesley, that. Wesley, my, my concern will be why, while the House of Representatives, we, we reject a bill that, that seeks to actually you know, um, rescue its own people. I mean, do you share Ugo Chuku's thought on this? It shows how um, not useful they are. It shows how they are not concerned about this nation. It shows how um, they are shallow in thinking. It shows how they don't look, you know, towards uh, what they can do for this nation. You know, if somebody can say that uh, a country has better uh, facility and all of that yeah. to cater for its own citizen, it's a slap on me as a citizen of this nation. It simply tells you that these guys are not thinking. It simply tells you that if a country that has better facilities to cater for such people wakes up one morning and within six days erects a hospital yeah. you know, to ensure that. So what is this country thinking? What are we thinking? What's the essence of the old billions and billions and billions? It's a slap on me. I agree with the fact that, yes, maybe those guys are safe there and all of that. Yes, they may not want to bring them. But it should, it is, I mean, it should be something that they should cover their face in shame, mentioning, yeah. you know, or in, a, in a chamber that is hallowed, mentioning right there that a, a country has better this to do this, and you are sitting there as a representative of a country. I mean, it's a slap on my face. Yeah, would you, would, do you think this portrays the Nigerian government in, in, in good light that they care about their citizens? Because you already said in 2019, this is an xenophobia attack of many Nigerians who were stranded in South Africa. Does this portray the, the federal government in any good light? I think see, Nigeria is the capital of any house in the world. We don't have shame, all right? And like you said, it doesn't portray me in bad light. All right. Um, the good news that Nigerians know about, all right, my government, my country, is, a lot of things is bad about us, for example. We're talking about a country where our president consistently for the last five years has lived in UK for months to receive proper health care. Whereas the Aso, Aso Rock Hospital and the rest of them, the, the, the National Hospital in Abuja is in a sorry state. So for me, yeah, it, I, I can live with the shame. All right, I can live with the shame and I can admit to myself because I'm an, I'm an honest person that if Nigerians, if the Nigerians in Wuhan, if you bring them back here, their chance of survival is minimal. So I would rather, I would rather them stay in China where, where they earn a living and, and they, have, they are documented and the Chinese government can take care of them. Uh, we, we have a good relationship with China. Uh, they, they are one of our biggest trading partners uh, as, as of today. So for me, yeah, is this shameful? It is shameful, but that is the truth because our president himself constantly for the last five years has lived in UK, mm. receiving proper health care. So there's nothing shameful about if, if our president can do it, let, our, let the citizens themselves stay there and be fine. That, now, there's, now there's a major concern that there are few Nigerians who have returned back from China and the Lagos state government has asked them to self-quarantine. Um, is this a wise decision? It's not supposed to be a self-quarantine. That's yes. what I am saying. Yes. You see, it's supposed to be that on arrival, you take charge. It's not supposed to be a self-quarantine situation. On arrival, you take charge. If you have to take charge for a week, you want to place these people under observation and all of that, it's fine. We have seen situations where in the country where they come from, they practically eat raw meat. 
they have seen documentaries of how they eat raw meat, just, you know, um, um, garnished with um, certain seasoning, and they call it whatever it is, and they eat it like that. So, and part of the things that has been stated by the World Health Organization, which causes um, coronavirus, is as a result of um, eating uh, 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 poorly cooked meat and all of that. So, if these people also are coming from there, and you are not even sure whether these guys have this virus or not, and you are talking about self-quarantine, what is the assurance that there will be any form of self-quarantine? Mm -hmm. Why not take charge? Why not take responsibility if it's just for a week or two? just to be able to ascertain and assure negotiations that, okay, this is what we have done, and these people are very okay to live amongst us. All right, in just 30 seconds, gentlemen, if you will, what is paramount for the federal government at this point in time when it comes to the issue of coronavirus? At, at, at least uh, it's for, it's for the NCDC, that's the, the agency that's in charge of all these communicable diseases, uh, led by Dr. Chikwe in Abuja. Uh, over, over time, they've done a great job from the Ebola uh, 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 crisis up to up to this moment, yes. uh, and I want to believe that they, they've proven themselves. That's why the fact that Nigeria is a very tough place to to work and do things. They've proven themselves to to know what they are doing. Uh, I, I think it, it's, it's high time for them to lead communication, for them to lead conversation on this issue, uh, especially what Lagos State government said yesterday. They, sh they shouldn't have said it. All right, telling people to self quarantine, self -quarantine. time you, you, is you are, you are selling fear. You are selling, you are selling uh, ignorance. Well, you are not selling confidence, and that is not what one would see from the commercial capital of, uh, of Nigeria. So uh, I, I think it's high time the, the state government, Lagos state and federal government, step back, all right? Let the agency that is in charge, the NCDC and the rest of them, take charge and start communicating to Nigeria. This is what you're supposed to do. This is what you're supposed to do. I think right. that communication will be in hope to people to know the government's In, in 20 seconds, this. John Wesley. Well, like you said, I will also call on the National Orientation Agency. The NOA. Take charge. Yeah. You know, uh, I, like I always say when I come here, the NOA, after elections, they go to sleep. You don't hear anything about them. They don't talk. It's until when there's another election coming up, you hear NOA raising all manner of um, jingo and what have you. So, but this is the time for the NOA to be more proactive, reach out to people, things that they should do, things that they should not do, and all of that. I think this is the time they should even partner with the World Health Organization on this. Political analyst John Wesley and Ugo Chukwikako, thank you very much for being part of the show this evening. Thank you for having and us. And thanks for staying with us. We'll take our plus report, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Do stay with us. The Say No campaign has called for thorough investigation of ministries, departments, and agencies that have refused to submit their financial report to the Office of the Auditor General of the Federation. Members of the campaign, while speaking to newsmen in Abuja, have described the actions of the MDAs as a breach of laid down rules and regulations and an attempt to promote corruption. Interestingly, 11 parastatals, 11 parastatals were reported to have never <coughs> submitted their financial statements or audited financial reports to the office of the AGF since their inception. Yet, they have continued to enjoy resources appropriated by the National Assembly and the Office of Budget and National Planning for this number of years. We find this hugely irresponsible and unacceptable. It directly indicts not just the defaulting parastatals, but also the National Assembly and the Office of the Budget and National Planning as complicit in this ongoing fraud. We call on the anti-corruption agencies to be proactive in responding adequately to this demanding allegation and take necessary action to hold these officials and their agencies responsible. We demand that erring CEO should be sanctioned and made to submit all outstanding financial reports, which should be thoroughly scrutinized by the Office of the Auditor General. We call on the President Mohammed Buhari to caution his ministers, push them to be responsible, and sanction the ministers responsible for defaulting MDA. The names of the defaulting agencies and their chief executive officers be published and full investigation to commence by the anti corruption agencies. This isn't so much about the ban on the Kekes or Okadas by the Lagos state government. Because truly, we all can't deny the menace these riders have constituted on our roads over the years. However, the real issue is how insensitive our leaders are to the ravaging unemployment and poverty rate in the land. 
With no active measures deployed by the government to address and solve the high unemployment rate in the state and no substitute or palliatives as measures to its mass transit inadequacy before the ban, this ban portrays the Lagos government in bad light and also makes them seem clueless to the daily harsh reality of its indigents and residents. And on the coronavirus, as we, as the lawmakers in the House of Representatives, divide in opinions on whether to evacuate Nigerians in China following the outbreak of the coronavirus, I think what is more important is for our health ministry to ensure we have the facility to handle the situation in the case that the virus enters Nigeria, and for the federal government to do the needful in ensuring that safety measures are in place for both Nigerians living in Wuhan City and those at home to avoid the spread of the virus. That's all for tonight. Thank you for staying with us. Join us again tomorrow, same time, and have a good evening.